What's up guys, West Coast Picks here, and today I'm in my uh, living room here, because the lock lab is being worked on. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is the uh, lock that I failed on, my last attempt, this was uh, the one, top of the pick. It's a Schlag Everest Challenge lock by the one, and uh, I tried to pick this one out of the package and failed. It actually got me into a deep false set and wouldn't leave, <laughs> so... Um, it's got a bit of a hitch to it, so I'm expecting like T-pin or something. But uh, I almost felt like I was in an overset trap last, last time I picked this, the fail that I had. Let's get it in a vice. It's not going to move. Right, garbage truck's about... <laughs> this a little bit. There we go. Alright. So I am going to use the shotgun again. And we'll top of the keyway with this bike spoke. And I'm using this bike spoke because it can actually go in the uh, shotgun handle as well and be used as tension. So if I feel like I need to, I can, I can switch. Alright, let's give this thing a shot. Click out of two. Touch out of ten, or <laughs> ten. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a lock? No, it was six, sorry. Uh, two again, two again, two again. Bit of a false set now. Four, bit more of a false set. Two, bit more. Oh, and I think I'm open. Wow. All right, that opened on, uh, felt like three. So let's take a look at that. Um, I'm betting over set trap because when I picked this the first time, uh, I fell into a very, very deep false set, and I could not get out of it. <laughs> so, I'm betting over set trap, uh, somewhere in the key pin position. And by looking at the bidding now, I could probably tell you it's going to be in position number five. I think that's what got me last time. All right. I am prepared. This is a Torx. And now I'm basically racing the clock here because my battery is dying. 11%. It's pretty good, but it stops recording at 5%. Like, it'll just stop. Won't let you record anymore, so. I got 6% of battery to do this video. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Very cool kick adapter. I don't think I've seen one of these yet. Please fit. Well, I can lock it up because I have the key. So we can tell it is picked. All right. Oh, man. It's already kind of stripped. Jeez. Yeah, it's already pretty stripped. Let's have to get out. Oh, please, let me make sure. Alright. Brutal. I'll try to find something to replace it with because that is no good. Key back in. Well, let's see what's in this bad boy. Uh oh. I just 
bent my shim. Very tight, uh, to be expected with a Everest. <laughs> All right. So four. Oh, what just fell out? Oh, the uh, the detent. And the springs around here somewhere. I got extras though. Not a big deal. All right. This one I think is an overset trap. Mm. I'll just serrate it. I might have overset it intentionally, but uh, maybe it was three that was the overset trap. But anyway, we have some nice core mods here. Um, not sure why, but there are actually holes at the ends of those cutouts. So I don't know why those are there. Maybe the uh, the driver will tell us. But other than that, we have threading on one, three, and that's it. And then their crazy cutout on four. So that's the plug mods. Let's go up top here. Let's see what we got. Sharp serrated pin. All right, we have a T pin. Uh, two. So I think I might have got caught in that cutout uh, the first time around, and the second time I didn't trigger it somehow. I guess I just didn't fall into it. And it opened relatively quickly. So, uh, we have a drunken spool here. A very short drunken spool. And that is, I see what's going on. So that is the, uh, the trap I fell into. We'll take a look at this in a sec here. So maybe I, uh, I'll call it luck or whatever you want, but, uh, there's actually two different shear lines with this. It's kind of like a master pitting on one chamber, except for the, uh, one of the pins is a T pin with a wafer underneath it. And if, uh, you don't push it up past the wafer, then you're left with a T pin and that's what falls into that groove and screws you. Uh, I think that's what screwed me the first time. So, I don't see any mods to the Bible. Let's take a look at these pins and the core. We'll get a good look at how this thing works here. Uh, focus in. There we go. So, uh, we'll just go over the pins really quickly here. We've got serrated, a serrated spool, a, another uh, double serrated spool, a standard, and four. Five is a nicely serrated pin, and six is a spool. Uh, we have a nice sharp serration on one driver. Uh, driver number two is a T-pin. Driver number three is also a T-pin. They are almost like wedding cake. They have a couple of steps to them, which is pretty cool. And number four is our T-pin with our wafer underneath it. That will be important in a second here. A standard in five, and a nice spool in six. So as we can see in four here, we have a cutout. And if you can see the bottoms of the cutouts on either side, there's a little hole that's been drilled in there. And uh, what happens is if you don't pick it all the way to the wafer, if you only pick it to the T-pin, and because it's reduced diameter, it wants to go first too, I'm pretty sure. And probably drops you into that big deep full set and kind of locks you in there. Um, and... You know, if you've picked it to that, then you're done already. You have to actually pick it to uh, the second position with the wafer. And that way, the wafer would be in the way of your groove. And it would just be like a regular pin. 
and you'd be fine. So very cool. Uh, that's what got me a fail out of the package. Uh, that is some cr crazy alien technology. Um, you know, normally adding a wafer to one of your drivers <laughs> would make it easier to pick because it gives you another shear line. But what this does, it gives you two shear lines, but one of them won't open the lock. <laughs> so pretty damn cool. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks a lot, the one, for pinning up this lock. Sorry about that, guys. Battery died. <laughs> As I was saying, thank you very much, the one, for... Uh, Pinning up this lock and sending it out to me and out to the community as well. A lot of fun to pick. Uh, a little devious there. I like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, I thought I'd also update you guys on the uh, Canadian Coin Bank. And this is the version 2. This is the final version. And uh, everything's a little bit more refined and nicer here. So it fits really nice. The lid uh, does not move at all. Um... It is sized exactly for a six-pin Medico mortis, mortise, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so, you know, other I have a Schlag Primus that also fits in here. Other six pins do fit, but um, you know, five pins probably won't. And you know, mortises are different sizes and stuff like that. So anyway, um, you unlock it and pull the lid off. You can see there's locating pins, and that's to stop the lid from. Uh, spinning around and stuff like that um, and any kind of you know prying attack or something like if you were to try to spin the whole thing or something um, and all the tubes are you can tell that's the dime tube <laughs> all the tubes are the same size and the inner diameters are are different um, also I have an uh, American version which is a pentagon which is kind of fitting actually um, because they have one less coin uh, they have pennies, but they don't have uh, loonies and toonies, so it uh, makes it five, which makes a pentagon, which makes it really convenient. I like that. Uh, so I'll be working on that. I'll probably be printing one out, even though I don't have American money to use it with. But <laughs> anyway, um, you can see the, the rolls are just kind of uh, captive in there, and they roll around, and you still have your slot, so you can see how many you have each. I'll go to the nickels because I have a lot of nickels. You can see stack of nickels there. So anyway, um, that is version two, all up to date and works good and everything fits tight, and a lot more secure and I like it. <laughs> it took about half a roll of plastic, uh, so about you know, about ten dollars of plastic to print this thing, and uh, almost twenty four hours. I'd say about twenty one hours altogether. <laughs> anyway, guys, later.